Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the comment video. We're going to be discussing the fact that Intel's Cannon Lake is facing yet another delay, and AMD are reiterating its confidence in Zen. Specifically, they believe it's going to kick butt. However, we're going to be sticking with Intel for now. Um, as I mentioned, the bad news is that it has been delayed yet again. Cannon Lake is going to be seeing the light of day, at least reportedly, on the second half of 2017, not a specific date has been given yet. That's kind of a pain in the butt, to be honest. Now, to be fair to Intel, I don't entirely blame them. We've had poor yield issues making um, nightmares for anyone who's started to shrink their process nodes down, and now we've moved from, let's say, 28nm all the way down to 14nm in the case of, let's say, or Broadwell and Skylake, which, you know, even Skylake's had some problems. Um, obviously, we've had the 6600 and 6700Ks respectively, but the rest of the, uh, the processor lineup hasn't been formally introduced yet. So Intel have moved to a 2.5 year tick tock tock, I guess you could say. Um, which obviously is very different to how they were doing things before. They were being a lot faster when it came to their TikTok methods. So unfortunately, it's just a simple case of, well, now we're moving down in processor sizes and it's just becoming a lot harder to manufacture things at these increasingly small sizes. This is one of the reasons, of course, that everyone and their mother are scrambling right now to move away from the, the traditional silicon processors. But moving back to the the primary piece of news here in terms of the delay currently the only real upgrade path available after Skylake is going to be KB Lake Intel really likes its lakes don't you know however there's even more bad news now from what's been gathered um, some of this is from benchlife.info and others are from reports on the Wall Street Journal and so on and so forth some are estimating that the processor lineup may not even come to desktops until the first quarter of 2017 for KB, which honestly sucks balls. I guess it depends on your perspective. From AMD's perspective, which we'll get into in a moment, probably doesn't suck balls. In fact, they're probably like rubbing their hands together in glee and thinking, finally, we get some bloody break. But no, from perspective of Intel and from those who are possibly stuck on an Intel platform or wish to stay on an Intel platform, it's not ideal. Now, from what we understand, KB Lake is going to be supported on Z170 SKLPHH-H. These names, they're just they're never friends to pronounce. It's not 100% clear which processors are going to be released in what order. But it's looking, and looking is not the same as will be, but it's looking like KB Lake and Zen are going to be pretty much hitting each other in the face when uh, the launch dates come together. It's looking like Cannon Lake, um, oh, I'm sorry, KB Lake and Zen will be released fairly close to the end of 2017, possibly for desktop. If AMD have any luck at all, They'll release, let's say, late half of 2016. Well, that doesn't even make sense. Let's say the third quarter of 2016, and they'll get, let's say, three or four months ahead of Intel, and they'll have enough of an improvement in their CPUs. Once again, we'll get to that in just a moment. That, okay, we're still able to compete, and obviously, we all know about uh, Zen Plus. From what we understand about KB, it's not going to be a massive IPC improvement. From what we're reading, from what's been released, and from what Intel have, uh, I guess, announced in terms of its various slides and processor roadmaps, it's pretty much an evolution of Skylake S. So yes, it's still going to retain support, uh, retain support for DDR4, DDR3L, so on and so forth. But the primary thing is it's going to have Thunderbolt 3, PCIe SSD, 3.1 controllers, all of that stuff. It's probably not going to be a massive improvement over what we've already got. Um, and the core configuration supposedly is still going to be quad core, which still sucks at balls in my opinion. Um, but there you go. Unfortunately, it just is what it is. 
I guess pricing is probably going to be fairly fairly comparable as well to what we've already got. So it's going to be kind of a... I wouldn't go as far as to say side grade, but if you've already got, let's just for the sake of argument, say a 6700K that's heavily overclocked, are you going to want to go with KB Lake? Probably not, unless there's major improvements. Maybe if you're using an integrated um, GPU for the sake of argument. But for those who are using a discrete GPU, let's say you're aiming to get HBM2 GPU next year, probably not the biggest deal, particularly when you're going to be paying for the nose from a high-end GPU, especially if you're going to be moving at that time to 4K. So I did mention AMD are reiterating their confidences. They're, they're, um, they're pretty confident in Zen. Well... I think it's fair to say, and we all know about the, the massive losses that AMD have been dealing with at the moment, they've, they've been getting absolutely battered financially, which isn't good. Um, I could probably go into this in another video, but suffice to say, it sucks from the perspective of customers. I really want to do a whole thing on this at some point, because to be honest with you, I'm getting really... Uh, to be honest, I'm getting extremely pissed, uh, just generally. Not necessarily of AMD or NVIDIA, or, you know, Intel, or any of these guys specifically, but just the whole gaming market at the moment, the whole tech market is really screwed up in my opinion at the moment. There's so much crap that's going on, whether it's always online DRM, microtransactions, or just the fact that we're in this really crappy position when it comes to uh, competition. It's, it's really... In a way, we've got this really awesome piece of technology which are coming out, but there's this stuff to sour it as well. However, trying to stay on a negative, and I know they're not 100% link, but still, I'm just venting a little bit. Allow me that. Allow me that. But anyway, I think it's fair to say that AMD are betting the farm on Zen. They really are. Um, if they want to remain competitive in the CPU division, yes, they do have some good APUs which potentially Zen could be used for, or the basis of Zen. But let's just be totally honest. In terms of desktop and server, and laptops actually, Zen, Zen's the last hope. It really is. They need it to be competitive. So if AMD are fortunate, once again, it's going to be released to before Intel. Now, we all know that there's going to be some rather impressive performance improvements over their previous excavator CPU architecture. Um, we don't know massive amounts about the composition of Zen, but AMD is saying that it would offer at least a 40% improvement over, uh, that's IPC, over excavator. So that's, that's not bad. We all know from you know the breakdowns that we've done that there are significant improvements to the architecture and significant changes for example um, a single zen core offers the same number of fpus and alus as a complete bulldozer module or dual core pair there's considerably there's considerable improvements when it comes to execution pipes for example the fact that now we have four instruction decoders which is a bit of a change. 10 pipes in total. So that's four ALUs, two AGUs, and four FPUs. So once again, some significant differences. And we all know about the changes when it comes to um, SMT, simultaneous multi-threading. It's this processor is built for high levels of throughput, high levels of raw performance. And unfortunately, when it comes to the previous generation of processors, Excavator, so for example, well, even the previous generation from the FX8350 for its sake of argument, there were problems because of the, the I don't want to say subpar, but the unoptimal FPU performance, floating point performance, it basically meant that code which is reliant on that and unfortunately for AMD that does mean games often it just did not run as well now on games or applications that weren't so FPU focused it wasn't so much of a big deal but that's just what it is however anyway uh, getting back to AMD's confidence levels 
They have said, or more specifically the CEO has directly quoted in saying, Zen is on schedule for availability in 2016 and a, full, a first full year of revenue ramp up in 2017. And Dr. Lisa Su has said, um, in terms of long-term roadmap, we are extremely committed to high performance x86. There should be no confusion. And she also continued, there no question that server market is attractive and data centers are attractive. We are focused on it from an x86 standpoint. So I guess you can say that they are very interested in hitting the server market because let's face it, with the advent of cloud, with the advent of compute servers and everything else under the sun, it makes sense because now servers are being specifically cloud servers are being used for everything whether it's online gaming whether it's data storage whether it's bloody running huge networks i mean imagine the amount of data servers that youtube use for the sake of argument or google or windows azure and how many things that powers and don't forget that even services like dropbox at the end of the day they are using massive data centers and in some tech cases they'll be farming out their services to let's say Amazon. In fact, I'm not 100% on this, so don't quote me, but I'm fairly certain that in the back end, Amazon are actually being used to power Dropbox. If memory serves, they're using various containers on the uh, Amazon network, but I'm not 100% certain. So all effectively Dropboxes is a prettier way of doing it, but they might have changed it because it's been a year or two at least since I looked into that. Anyway, as we stated in our financial analyst day, we had a target of 40% IPC performance over our previous generation and we are on track with that. Relative to process technology, we take out multiple products through multiple fabs in FinFets and we believe that we are also on track of overall ramp. Now, realistically, there's Global Foundries, TSMC and Samsung. AMD have a history with TSMC and Global Foundries. As far as I'm aware, they do not have a history with Samsung. Someone can probably correct me on that. I don't think they do. So it's looking like it's going to be an interesting next year. I'm really hoping for the sake of AMD and PC gamers as a whole, we see major improvements. Now I did like the Skylake uh, platform when I reviews it. I'm not going to lie. I think it's a very impressive piece of technology. I think the fact that they've made considerable improvements about the amount of bandwidth across the whole CPU, the temperatures are great, the chip overclocks like crazy. It does have definitely improvements over um, Haswell, so for the sake of argument, 4770K. But with all of that said, if you do happen to have a really high-end processor already let's say an i7 and you're on Haswell you want this really crappy position because it's like do you upgrade I don't know because next year you've got these new processors which are coming out let's say Zen hopefully we're going to have a higher core count with Zen and that's the big problem because right now we're in this really crappy position as customers where quite frankly speaking I'm not saying upgrading now is a bad idea because honestly even if you upgrade tomorrow and you plonk down the money for let's say an r9 390x or you buy a, a fury or you buy a 980 or whatever you end up purchasing with your processor you're certainly going to have a hell of a lot of fun before the next generation gpus and so on come out but we don't really know where the market's going to be going and yes we know about directx 12 and yes we know that that theoretically is going to be Quite an improvement on performance, but how important are those additional processor cores going to actually be in reality for the average game with DirectX 12? It's a too early to tell. But anyway, it's been an interesting video. It's been a ranty video, but it's, it's been a thing. So hopefully you will join me for the next one, my friends. I would greatly appreciate it. But with that said, thank you very much for watching. Um, thanks for the support and, you know... Uh, making it through to the end. Hopefully, as I said, you'll give the video a like and join me for the next one. But for now, take care and have a pleasant evening or morning or afternoon or whatever you happen to be doing. Take care. Bye for now.